Hey, this is Wayne here, and today we're going to be installing the 4040 XP door closer from LCN. It's going to go on this door right here. We've already got one of the continuous hinges mounted right here, and today we're going to put this on. We're also going to install the operator that turns the mechanical closer into a fully automated door in a separate video. So stay tuned. This is going to be the building blocks and the first step that you're going to need to control this door. Stay tuned. All right, so for this application, we're going to be using the 4040 XP. It's an 18 PA plate. Okay, so, so this is going to be a drop down plate that actually brings the closer mounting down, correct? That is correct. So we're going to put this plate, it's going to come up here. Okay. And actually, this one mount this direction here. Perfect. Um, and what, so is the, what is the reason for the plate? So the reason for this plate is we can't, we don't want to mount the operator because it's closer up here. We want to mount it down here. So this plate allows you to bolt this straight to the door, and then there's special bolts that go into the, off the the closer and the plate here, and that will give us our our mounting for this narrow style storefront door. And then we have another plate that sits up here for our closing arm, and this is for parallel mount on this door. This is going to be a parallel mount door. Parallel mount. All right, perfect. All right, so your 4040 XP is going to come. You have the side with these three valves here. These are going to be your adjustment valves for closing, opening the door, that kind of stuff here for your back check and all that. There's some instructions here for that. On the back side of this thing, there's going to be this valve that ships with the valve open. You don't want to close this valve before you get this mounted on the door. Otherwise, you're going to have to uninstall the closer and get this valve tightened down. If you don't tighten this valve down all the way, don't tighten it, back it off a little bit. The instructions say to tighten this valve down all the way. If you do not tighten that all the way, the closer is not going to work properly. All right, so now we're going to bolt our closer to our drop plate here. And these screws that come with these poke out of the back here just enough to bite into our heavy duty steel plate here. Once again, last chance to make sure that that little valve is shut on the back. Double, triple check it every time, otherwise you will forget. Also, these screws are specifically designed, they're made for this unit so that they will not go past and hit the glass. They're designed to go on and mount flush and perfect with that, so you don't have to worry about them poking into anything or damaging anything. drop down plate is pretty much a pre-built template already because it has all the holes pre-drilled. Beautiful. Alright, so now we're going to mount our Close our arm. I'll just throw this little bolt in here for right now. We're gonna mount this arm up here on our plate. Again, flush mount screws already pre-drilled and tapped. Beautiful. All right, so now we're going to attach our closing arm to our closer. I'm gonna need a wrench. And there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could attach the arm to the closer first and then put the screws on later. It really doesn't matter. No, the important thing is to get a preload on here. So you're gonna bring your, you're gonna bring and preload your device. And then we're gonna pop this arm up here. So this is parallel mount, so the arm is going to sit parallel with the closer. It's going to snap into place, and now it's going to touch your door. Really what you want to make sure though is that this is parallel to the door itself. Correct, yes. I usually do two fingers, but the main, the whole point of parallel is this arm is parallel to the door. Come back just to skosh. Right there. Actually, right about there. Okay. 
Once you have the measurement here set, you're going to lock this screw down. Lock that down nice and tight. Don't break it. <laughs> Perfect. Now we have this thing completely installed and ready to go. We can give it a test. We'll go ahead and mount the top screw into here and this will be completed. Installing the top screw, fairly easy. So this washer screw, this giant headed screw here keeps the armature from working its way up off the closer. Beautiful. All right. Okay, so now that we have the complete door closer installed, it's installed according to the factory specifications and measurements and geometry, we now need to go ahead and adjust the closing speed and the latching speed. And this is where a lot of people just kind of, they slap these things up and they don't take the time to actually adjust it correctly. So let's talk about some of the bad things that can happen if you don't ad adjust this door correctly. So if we bring this open now, and it is out of adjustment. So, and you let it go, see it's gonna come, it's gonna slam shut. Real hard. Imagine a kid's fingers or your fingers sitting in here, it's gonna really hurt or break a finger, cut your hand up, something like that. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go through the different adjustments here. And when we look at our closer, we have a few different adjustments. Number three, and there's arrows pointing over to where the valves are. Number three is going to be our latch speed. Number two is gonna be our closing speed. And number one is gonna be our back check. So we're gonna talk about the back check first. As we bring the door open, if the wind catches this thing, you see there's no, there's no stopping it. It's gonna fly all the way open. You could break the door and that's where you see a lot of those doors with like this one used to have with all these screws ripped out and all this other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. That's the number one cause is actually the wind whips it. There's no door stop mounted on the ground. So the, door, the wind takes control of the door. You basically have a giant six foot, seven foot kite basically. And it's gonna swing that out of the way, rip and break things. And it's gonna cause a lot of problems. The back check can prevent that from happening. Right, what the back check does is as the door speeds up as it's opening, if, it, if the wind catches it and it increases its velocity, there's gonna be a suction at, towards, the, towards the full open position where it's going to cushion it much like a shock. So up, in the, up inside the valve body here, it goes in through one of the valves, which happens to be this one here. So when we tighten this valve down, this increases the back check. So we can tighten this guy down all the way if we want to. And then when we open the door, you can see it, it actually stops here. It's fighting me. So it's as actually... this door comes open, it fights me. I can push really hard and I can finally force this open. But so if the wind catches this thing, as it comes to about here, that's when the back check starts engaging. And this is where it comes in. I'm leaning into this door to get it to force open. So what we want really is this back check to catch around here and come open slowly. So we're gonna tone this back. I'm just gonna dial our back check back here. And then test it again. We're still a little, we're still wanting to come open a little further before that engages. You, you almost, and you don't want it to be too stiff and strong either because you have to figure, I have to be able to open this door, you have to be able to open this door, and the 90 year old lady has to be able to open up this door too. Right, and we don't want the door stopping here and engaging the back check because then they're fighting it open, they're going to try to come in and the door is going to close too soon on them. So we really want this to be about where it is here. You always have to think about not just yourself, but other people operating this door. Children, elderly, people that are disabled, people that are on walkers, crutches, wheelchairs, etc. Exactly. So I always like to set my back check first because it's it's my it's my furthest option away from where, where I'm traveling into. Now our closing speed needs to be adjusted. And that's gonna be our second valve here. So the valve closest to the arm here is gonna be our closing speed, so that's number two. And there's handy arrows here that point here. And it shows you clockwise is going to be slowing the door down, 
counterclockwise and you're going to be speeding it up. Or as I like to think of it, tightening is like tightening, like if you think of a water faucet, tightening down, you're restricting the flow of the oil through the chambers through there. Right. Opening it up is going to open that up and make it go, make more flow go through so it'll be faster. Exactly. So you're just restricting that valve or opening it up. So here I've tightened the valve all the way down. If we let go of the door, it doesn't holds move. Open. It does not move. So we're going to push this open. And when you apply pressure to the valve coming this direction, inside here, it's going to start pushing fluid through this valve first. And you can see the door is coming clo closed very, very slowly. So we're just going to loosen this up. And each, each turn, so a full turn is a lot. A little bit of movement here is going to be good. So I know from experience I want to try a full turn first. And we'll see how, how well it does. It's still, still staying open. You just back this out turn by turn. We're going to do two rotations this time. And what exactly are the target numbers we're going for? We need seven seconds total from door at 90 degrees to completely close, correct? That's correct. You'll notice I am pulling this open from a 90 degree. We want the door to open up to 110 or more, maybe 180 degrees. But at the 90 degree mark, we want this door coming closed to full close. We don't want it more or any less than seven seconds. So five seconds to about latch speed, seven seconds total to close is what we target those numbers. And that's gonna be, as the door comes, and the, it's the sweep, correct? That's it correct. brings in to the sweep, to which will be right about here, mm -hmm. and then the latching section, that extra little ka-chunk that it needs to get to latch the door is what we refer to as the latch. So the latch right. and the sweep are the two things that we're adjusting. And you want to, it's about two inches out. When you open the door and let it go, the door should close and latch from two inches open is, is what you're going for. Because maybe the wind kicks the door open a little bit, you want that thing coming back in and closing it. Or if it comes closed, you have a lot of stack pressure, if the stack pressure goes away, you want that thing to latch. So, and at that two inch mark, it shouldn't take longer than two seconds. Otherwise, again, a finger being trapped inside there if your spring is too high. Uh, which these do come with a spring adjustment here too. You can increase and decrease the amount of spring tension, which also puts the, which gives and you your load speed. Those are things that you need to pay attention to too with your local and state laws, because some places require 15 pounds of pressure right. or less, and some are five pounds of pressure, right. depending on where you're at. And that's the pound of pressure that you're gonna need to require to push the door open. And we'll go over that a little bit later. So we're at 90 degree open, we're gonna let it go. Pretty hard slam still. Yep, so we're too, we're too far. So two turns was a little bit too much. Now we're gonna go half turn. I wanna see where that gets us. There's about 90 degrees. One, two, three. So still too much. We're gonna go about a quarter turn now. So now we're getting into that, make small adjustments. One, two, three, four, five. So we got five seconds now. Yep, so we're gonna go back to about a quarter turn here. One, two, three, four, five. We'll bring that up just a little bit further, so another quarter turn. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. So we're about eight seconds, so I think we need to tune the latch down just a little bit. So yeah, we're actually gonna tune the latch, and then we can come back through and do a, fine, a finer adjustment on the close. So we're gonna pull our latch down. So you can dial it all the way in, you can dial about halfway, however you wanna do it. I like to go and figure out how far in it goes, and then bring it out about halfway, and we'll see where it goes. I didn't count that one. That's okay. I think it's a little slow though. So the latching side, you do kind of want it to, to pull in a little bit faster, but not by much. So we'll find, we'll pull this out just a little bit. Again, eighth, eighth turn, quarter turn, it's a lot of movement in the door. One, two, three, four, five, six. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beautiful, money. That's money. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now this door is safe. It's safe for 
elderly people and um, handicapped people to open. It's safe for kids to be around. It's safe for people to walk in. It's safe for people to have their hands here and not advising that you put your hand here. But if the door does come shut, it's going to simply let me know that my hand is in a place that it's not to be rather than cause some serious damage that did not really hurt at all. It just lets me know, oops, my hand is where it shouldn't be. I'm in a pinch point, I need to move. So and the spring tension is so that it's not going to crush someone's hand as it comes close. But it will if it has the momentum to do so. Exactly. So final thing will be the- Final part, you're gonna take your, this little bracket here, pops out, not very easily, right? You mount this little bracket in here like so. And then you snap this up here. There's a little screw hole if you want to fasten this to the door. And then we're just about done. I'll we'll show you another tool we have. Alrighty, so John has a spring tension measuring tool. And this is going to give us in pounds, measured in pounds, how much, oh, it gives you pounds and kilograms, mm -hmm. how much force it takes to open the door because most people don't realize this. A lot of people will just go grab a door closer, slap it on their door, and they're not aware of all the rules, regulations, and mandatory things that need to be in place when installing these. This is one of them. It's not supposed to be over 15 pounds of pressure. And actually in Colorado, it's really not supposed to be over five pounds according to what I know and the knowledge on this date, which is in 2022. Go ahead and show us how it works. So it's real simple. You're gonna place this against the door and then you're just gonna push it nice and gentle and the door is gonna open. This little black ring tells us approximately where our pounds to open the door is. We're about between six and seven pounds right here. Roll it over just a little bit towards me. So if we roll over here, we're at roughly that six pound, between six and seven pounds on our scale. Beautiful. All right, and that is the difference between hiring a quality professional to come install your door operators on, or your door closers as opposed to just hiring the handyman or the local maintenance guy or whoever. There are major differences between professional quality work and the regular person installing these. Is there anything else we need to know about this? Nope. Alrighty. Join us next time. We're actually going to attach the 6040 LCN door operator. 6440. 6440. Yep on this particular device. It actually utilizes the closer and actually bolts right onto it. It is going to be epic and amazing. So stay tuned and watch for that video.